So if you've opened this video, we're on example two in the pension lecture note. Again, we have a very similar set of facts from example one, except this time what we're kind of moving around is we have an actual return again, but in addition, we have an expected rate of return, which will convert to an expected dollar amount of return. So similar to the last one, except we're just adding a bit of complexity. And also, instead of giving you the interest cost in dollars, we use the settlement rate, which we'll, we'll show in just a minute, is used to calculate the interest cost. And in fact, you see it right here. Question A, calculate the interest cost. So the interest cost is, in general, the settlement rate, which is an interest rate that's given by the actuary. It's used to calculate the present value of the projected benefit obligation. And we take it times the PBO at the beginning. So settlement rate 8%, the beginning PBO balance is 737,400. And you get, in this case, the interest cost of 58,992. All right, now, the next thing we're gonna do is calculate the actual, I mean, excuse me, the asset gain or loss. So what is this conceptually? The idea is that you'll have an expected return, and in this case, we're given the expected rate of return. So this is an assumption that's made about what the plan assets on average will return. And then you take that 9%, multiply it times the beginning plan assets to get the return, the dollar level return. Okay, so 9% times 613480 equals an E, in these brackets, E means expected actual return, not rate of return, but the expect, excuse me, the expected actual return. So we put that together and we get, let's see, 0 0.09 times 613480. And I'm getting 55,213. And you see the equation above. Um, what I like to do is take, so let's see, our actual return was a positive 61,000. So this is the actual return. The expected return was 55,213. And if it's a positive number, it's a gain. If it's a negative, it's a loss. So the gain is 5787. You expected only 55213. Your actual return exceeded that. That's good news. That's a gain. Okay? So we'll set that aside right now. Because this is going to be a component of a pension expense which we'll see in part C. Last time I mentioned the components of pension expense. So let's get up here. Here is this, this information, first of all, as a reminder, it's pension asset or liability is the difference between these two. We did that last time. This is, I mentioned last time, probably better to say accumulated other comprehensive income prior service cost. It gives you the balance of that account. And then we have the components of pension expense, service cost, interest cost, 8% times the 737,400 equals 58,992. Amortization of prior service cost, add to pension expense, add to pension expense, add to pension expense. The actual return on plan assets, this is component four. Um, if positive actual return, then decrease pension expense. 
negative actual return increase pension expense. So um, not a complicated relationship, but not automatically a plus or a minus. You have to think about it a little bit. All right, and then with this one, we're going to calculate, these are, the fifth component are gains and losses. And in this, this one, we had a gain of, and in particular, let's see, it was 57.87, gain of 5.787. This was a special type of gain, it's called an asset gain because it has to do with plan assets, okay? And the contribution and benefits paid are not part of pension expense. It's not a pension expense component, okay? All right, so, um, Interest cost, look at the components of pension expense here in part C. It says, what is pension expense? Interest cost plus service cost plus amortization of prior service cost minus a positive actual return. It would have been minus a minus actual return if it was negative, so then it, you would have added to it. And then plus asset gain. Okay. Or we would have subtracted an asset loss. And this equals pension expense. So it seems a little counterintuitive to have a gain and then increase your expense, but what we're going to see is that this is a debit because it's increasing the expense. We're gonna see an offsetting credit to an other comprehensive income account right here. So we calculate our pension expense. Here's the pension expense adjusting journal entry. The amortization of the OCI prior service cost, again, we saw this in the last problem. This is a 17,000 is a component of pension expense, but it also has its own accumulated uh, other comprehensive income account, which we did in example one. So it's the same thing here. The component that adds to pension expense the offsetting credit is to OCI gain loss. So part of the 17,000 for the prior service cost is in here and part of the 5787, whoops, the asset gain is in pension expense. And the 57,000 comes from contribution, which again, AKA also known as the funding payment. Funding payment. Funding is over here. And then this 992 is a plug number. Okay. So with amortization of prior service costs, you're always gonna have a credit. With OCI gain or loss, if you have a credit, it's a gain. If it's OCI has to be, gain loss has to be debited, then it was an asset loss, all right? Uh, finally, I don't think it's asking for it, but let's do it anyway. Pension, asset, slash liability. What did we start with again? Go back up to the 123,920. A liability of 123,920, which is a credit balance. And if we post the 992, we end up with 123.920 plus 992, 124.912. So you'd end up with a pension 
liability of 124.92. Okay, so this part added the settlement rate. It had added, so we added here, relative to example one, the settlement rate, and we added the calculation of an asset gain or loss. Remember this here, actual return minus expected return results in a gain of positive, loss of negative. This formula for asset gain or loss uh, will always work out. All right, so that's the end of example two and I'll see you on the other side in example three.